Welcome to Around the Board, a show where four board game enthusiasts discuss board game topics and news. We begin today's show talking about math trades, and then we'll see which one of us can club the biggest seed. From there, it's on to another great game debate, this time one of my favorites. In fact, number one on my list, Heaven and Ale. And once again, we'll round out the show with our list of the top 20 selling board games of all time. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Daniel Connors, John Theismann, Chris Thomason, and the Storm, and the Calm After, Andy Barnett. Hey, guys. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, Andy. How are you? I'm doing okay. I've uh, been playing some interesting games lately. I got to gotta play uh, Earth recently, one of the hotness games. And, uh, well, I'll get to my opinion on that a little bit later. But uh, what about you? What have you guys been playing? Well, funny you should ask, because uh, Daniel and I got the chance to play a game that you might see up here above me here, New Kingdom Gardeners, which is on Kickstarter right now. I think it's our first Kickstarter preview copy that we've gotten a hold of on this show. Hashtag not a sponsor. But I reached out to these guys because I'd seen it advertised on Facebook. And I said, hey, give us a little love here. Can we play your game? See what we think about it? And we did. Daniel and I played it. And we have a little short video talking about it. And that's what's coming up right here next. Hey guys, this is Daniel from the blue corner. John popping in from the red corner. And today we have a special video for you. And we, we are got an early review copy of New Kingdom Gardeners from New Kingdom Gaming. All right. So it's a Christian, but John, want to explain it real quick? It has. Um, yes. I don't know if, you, if you're like me, but you've seen this on Facebook quite a bit. At least I did when it was getting ready to launch on Kickstarter, which it's in the middle of the Kickstarter right now. You still have a few more days to go on and uh, reserve your copy if that's what you want to do. And it's actually reached the first threshold of rewards at least at this point, yeah. which is the wood meeples. So that's, you know, to make to upgrade the uh, components to the nice wood meeples, which is what we all like. Yes, especially but, Chris. He needs wood meeples. Yes, we all know that. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, so New New Kingdom Garners is kind of a set collection game. It's actually kind of unique. I've never it, it really, really is. played anything quite Mm-hmm. like it it is pretty simple i'm gonna throw that out there yeah right but it kind of has this illusion of being a cooperative game even though it's totally not mm-hmm. yes it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek cooperative it really because, is because like all good christians we should be helping our neighbors that is correct so you get points for helping your neighbors yes well you get fruit you get fruit yeah your work, exactly your works bear fruit sorry he's the theme guy there i say go. points <laughs> he says fruit so yeah so like you'll you'll do things like a uh, thorns will show up in your garden and mm-hmm. if you end your the game with them you lose three points mm-hmm. but if it's in my garden and john and clears, i prune it and i help him i get that out of his garden it's worth three points to the good yeah. for me so yeah, free so, fruit so yes, he bears he, fruit for me he yep. mind he saves me from negative points yep. but he gets positive points mm-hmm. yep. um also you can help each other but workers in each other field as yep. well that's true so if i have a worker in my field working all by himself he's not giving me a lot of points mm-hmm. so then john comes along and goes here have one point but john now gets three points for yes. doing that yes so you're always helping each mm-hmm. other yeah but even though it's tongue-in-cheek cooperative there are a little bit of fun elements of subtle take that do you know what i'm talking about john yes there are that's moving the yes, weeds yes. through the fields uh-huh. it's kind of interesting about you have three spots mm-hmm. where um, you can plant your field at yep and uh one of those spots can be taken up by weeds well as you three plant spots in your garden right yeah. there and as you plant your flowers and the weeds come up the whole thing kind of shifts over and if it gets pushed off your board it actually goes to your neighbor so yep. you can kind of time it right. You can be like, oh, no, I'm going to push these weeds out mm-hmm. to John's yep. so I don't get negative points now. Yes. But now John will if he can't take care of it. Yep. Good Uh-oh. thing Good thing to do when you know the end of the game. When you know the, the master gardener is about to make his return, which is what ends the game. That's right. So good way to set up your opponents to fail that way. Yep. But, or if you have an extra action, you can be like, oh, that, that went into your garden, oh, John. Let me, I'm let me, so sorry. Let me, let me prune me, that for you. Let me get that for you. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. And yes. then um, so... It works really well. It's a pretty clever mechanic. Um, yes. uh, uh, who do you think this game is for? Well, you know what? It's it's when we first played it, we didn't play it correctly, <laughs> and I wasn't sure who this game was for. Yes, because we were thinking it was a set collection. You're trying to get all these sets collection, and there's too many different workers to really collect much of a set yeah. to get to get any fruit. So when we played it correctly. It's like you were saying, it's it's easy to teach. It's a simple game at its core, which is usually the kind of games I like. Where yeah. They're simple to their core, but then it's the decisions you make when you play them. Because you're like, do I want to play that onto my board? Or do I want to play it on his board where I can get points and get more points? You because know, he's going to play one on there, then he'll just get the points. So it's, it's yeah, it's it, it leads to some tough decisions. And then there's you're trying to chain different workers together mm-hmm. and their actions. And yeah, it's, so, a, it's kind of a combo game. If you really it like, really if is, you you're trying to get an combos. engine running. Yep. 
Yeah, that's right. If you have uh, engine building, combo yep. building, mm -hmm. you get different workers that all have synergies with each other. So yes. you might be able to plant something and then immediately reap it instead of waiting till the end of the game. Yeah. Um, or you might be able to trade with your part with your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, and get what you need. They don't have any yep. choice, so it's not really trading. Yeah. It's, it's kind of stealing. <laughs> it kind of is. But, but, but you, you give them something. But you give them something. Yeah. So you know it's great. Now here's the question: People see a Christian themed game. Mm -hmm. Do you think non Christians would enjoy this game? I think they would. I will say that it's. I I mean, if you're completely offended by it, you won't, because there are verses on it. There's things. It would be really actually. There's not verses. Well, there's, there's quotes there's from quotes. religious there was people. Verses on there, there might be, but uh, like the fruits of the spirits, goodness, patience, kindness, self control. Yeah. Those are the goods. Yes. But beyond that, there actually isn't a lot of like pure. Yeah, Christian. I guess you're right. If you did not tell yeah. somebody that this was a Christian themed yeah. game, I don't think they would know. Yeah. But if not you by do, the pure game itself. Exactly. Correct. Correct. Uh, I mean, if they're reading all the flavor text, then they might yeah. be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I think this is really cool if you are like a homeschooler, um, yeah. a te parent who wants to teach their kids biblical principles through mm -hmm. board games. This would be a really great um, lesson. Also, if you just believe in like, you know, good things like kindness, goodness, self-control, yep. and then bad things are bad, like envy, selfishness, greed. Yes. You can kind of show that these, how these fruits kind of work together and how you want the good, yes. but you want to get rid of the bad. Yes, so good. I think this is something that anybody can enjoy. It's subtly Christian. It's not overtly, even though if you look into it, it's very Christian, yes. but you won't know that unless you yeah. super look into it. Mm -hmm. So, And I, I will do want to say that the I think the biggest challenge for making a Christian theme game is to make something that's not co-op that doesn't mm -hmm. sound forced or doesn't seem nothing seems forced in this game. No. It really seems every you're doing everything for a reason. It mm -hmm. all makes sense and it's like you're saying co-op kind of. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like but not really. Not really at and all. And so that's that's <laughs> Because yeah, you almost have to make a straight co-op to have a yeah, Christian game. And now this one, this and it's it's no. there's many things in it I've never had in a game before. So I, yeah. I, th I think it's well worth a look if mm -hmm. you haven't seen it, or even if you have seen it. And uh, you want to break away for the video right now? We'll break uh, sure, yeah. Let's okay. take a look at the uh, Kickstarter video. Yeah. Um, it's May 6th right now. So if you're watching this, you can still, uh, when it first releases, mm -hmm. you might be able to back it still at later yeah. on. We don't know. But, yeah. hey, find a copy. I think it's worth your time, especially mm -hmm. if this sounds interesting to you at all. I think it's worth it. So yeah. let's go to the video. Let's do. In the beginning, the master gardener planted everything in time. He created people with unique gifts and skills to share the delicious fruit his seeds produced all over the world. From among them, he chose gardeners to carry on planting and appointing workers. Over time, some gardeners became defiant, refusing the master's ways and neglecting their gardens. Now, sinister thorns creep about on the face of the earth, disrupting the once verdant gardens of the world. However, there is hope. You, your fellow gardeners, and your helpful doves are hard at work planting new seeds, appointing skilled workers, and pruning thorns wherever you find them. For soon the master will return for a great harvest at which a head gardener will be chosen to lead a new generation of gardeners. Will you be the one to produce the most fruit and receive this honor in New Kingdom Gardeners. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's uh, unfortunate that Chris and I didn't get an invite. <laughs> yeah, I, I, guess, happens, they, I yeah. guess they knew we wouldn't be very helpful. That's so. what it was. Mm, that's yes. what it is. That's exactly what it is. But hey, that, that uh, Kickstarter is still going on, and they've actually reached two levels of, what do they call that, Kickstarter? Stretch goals. Uh, uh, Stretch goals. So... Nice. Originally, you were supposed to have cardboard doves and little cubes, which Chris loves. But now you're going to get screen printed meeples for the doves and the fruit. So wow. there you go. And it's not that much. <laughs> I think it's only 39 bucks for the game. So not too you bad. Know, ooh, I can't wait till they, they, they produce my Christian theme board game. Which one? Which Do I one want to ask? The mini. It's well, it's I've done a few parodies, but this one I'm real serious about. It has to do with uh, it, you're in the future. You're eating uh, basically demonic possessed bacon okay um because it's part of the whole legion that was cast into the pit. yes it, it, they all ran into the ocean i'm still working on it but it's going to be great do you have so a name no for joke it? there you were literally working on this game <laughs> no this is just i mean i'm just there's no joke i mean this is just oh. all in my head man it's all in my head 
<laughs> I was here setting you up. I'm like, oh, and then what's the name, Andy? I thought there had to be some big pun coming. Okay. Unfortunately, that's all I got so far. Wow. Well, I guarantee you the game we played, New Gardeners Kingdoms. New Kingdom <laughs> Gardeners. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be better than uh, your idea, Andy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. Even even if they've upgraded the the meeples and instead of having the nice cubes, it'll still be better than Andy's game. Yeah, <laughs> mine would be bacon scented. Well, that Ooh. does that is an improvement. Okay, okay. <laughs> with a hint of demon. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, oh, hey, you know why the people are really here? They're here for us because we are just amazing people, and they want to see what happens when we compete with one another. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game! It is absolutely time to play the game. Around the board is all about debating different topics within Tabletop Gaming in four unique segments, each hosted by one of us. A behind-the-scenes judge will award points at the end of the show. Whomever has the most points will be able to sit on their soap throne, pratering to themselves, whilst their Meeple Town subject faces go slack and eyes glaze over. Now it's time to play the game. <laughs> Round one. Fight! All right, so for our first segment, we are going to talk about math trades. In this segment, we will discuss our experiences with math trades and whether we believe they are a welcome site or a vast expanse of nothingness. Because let's be honest, if you've participated in a math trade before, there's a good chance you've gotten screwed over at least once. But does that mean we should get rid of it completely? I submit that we should not. I think math trades are phenomenal and they need to be embraced in the community. So um, the first thing that you need to know about math trades, though, is you have to learn how to do them correctly. And by that, I don't mean like how to input games and all that stuff, but you have to know what you're willing to trade for. So a math trade, in case you don't know what that is, is where you put it into a system, I want to trade this game. 50 other people say they want to trade a game, and then the computer does magic. It's magic, not science. And they tell you, okay, this person A wants to trade persons B and person B wants to trade for person C and person C wants to trade for person A. And it makes that all work out and it's wonderful. So the reason that you need to learn how to like how this all works though, is because the first time you play, you do this, what you're going to do is go, you know what? I'll trade Gloomhaven for, uh, I don't know, Fable Fruits. Sure. I guess like it's a game I kind of want. Oh, but I really want um, but I really want uh, the new Castles of Mad King Ludwig expansion or uh, deluxe edition. Guess which game you're going to get. You're going to get that Fable Fruits one or whatever one I, I said. I already forgot what example I was. You're not going to get the Castles of, of Mad King Ludwig deluxe edition. So you need to make sure you are picking the exact um, the 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 exact game you want for that game. Don't don't ever think like, well, I guess I'll just throw this one in there. Just maybe I'll get it because you won't. I mean, you will. You will get that one because it's garbage and nobody else wants it. And that's how those math things work. So as long as you understand that, uh, I think math trades are great. Um, but I do want to say one thing else about math trades. So sometimes people, they have this issue where the game's kind of like in a uh, damaged mode or whatever, and they get really upset about it. Now, if it's trashed, I think that's something that you can be upset about. But if it's like a little dented and somebody said, oh, but it's in great condition. Just let it be, guys. Like, be okay that your box is a little dented, but try to be upfront and try to be honest about it. So, sorry, I know I went a little long, but I felt like I had to explain what the math trade was. Those oh, yeah. New, those new meds are really working for you, Daniel. I've never seen you be so chill about a dented box before. Yeah, exactly. Oh, whatever. You guys know. <laughs> so, I have a reputation of being very, like, like elitist the, elitist with my game <laughs> but you know for the past like 10 years i've been running fbc gamers and i let anybody use my games and i have gotten over that you guys cannot hang that on me anymore so i don't care if my box is slightly dented it does hurt a little bit but it's okay but how many so. lives have you ruined in that 10 years before you got over it uh several <laughs> <laughs> i'm scarred by but the you know what i didn't about. ruin my board games that I had because they were all in pristine conditions <laughs> and unstickered as well because you know stickering damages the value of your game. Why even open them? Why even take the uh, the shrink off, Daniel? Why not just sit oh, in a room with them? They're not meant for. He doesn't anymore. He learned from you. He doesn't open them. I don't. Them. No. I don't. They're all in shrink. I don't actually play games, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just buy them. <laughs> Gosh. All right, John. Well, well, and also if you open up the shrink, 
then <laughs> you can't math trade them, right? So, sorry. Go ahead, John. Wow. Well, I think it, Daniel hit on something there. He's kind of found the meta on these math trades last time because he had garbage he was putting in the last math trade. And he's like, nope, I only want these really expensive games that are new and shrink. And I'll be darned if he didn't trade some of those for some good games. And he, it's, it's having the self-control. But as far as what, it, what math trades do for me, it, it gives you that feeling when you're a kid of uh, Christmas morning where you, you, turn, you, put, you shove out all these games that you want and you're thinking of them in your list at night. Oh, man, that'd, that'd be a good if I got that. It'd be good if I got that. And it's kind of like what Daniel said, though, because then you get your, your sheet back that says what you did trade for. And I'm always like kind of excited when I say it. Oh, yeah, I wanted that. Yeah, I wanted that. I wanted that. And I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't get that one. <laughs> I didn't get that one and I didn't get, I didn't get like my first five choices for that, but I did get this one. It's a good game. And then, yeah. So, so you really have to lower your expectations unless you're trying to cheat the system. Like, like Daniel pretty much does where you're just throwing garbage out there and seeing what you can get and don't accept garbage in return. But this last time, what happened to me though, however, I think I was the only one of us that participated in this latest math trade that was local. And it's the first time I've gotten, I mean, a damaged game, like, I reached out to the guy and he's like, yeah, something happened on the way to the math trade. You know, it wasn't that an old joke, man. Hey, something happened on the way to the math trade, <laughs> but the entire top of the box is split. And it's like, it's a good thing. It was not like it was a game I traded for value, but then the game that I did trade for, for value was completely misrepresented and it's not the edition. It's not any, and it's, and he's like, Oh, well, that's the only uh, picture I could find online. I'm like, no, that's it's I'm looking at what you typed in. I'm not looking at the picture. <laughs> I'm looking at your typewritten description, which is incorrect. But I'm like, what are you going to do? So I, I'm, I'm thinking if you have a game that's really valuable, I wouldn't even do the math trade because I would be, we have another friend that had her really valuable game listed not to trade and it got traded for something that was garbage. And so, so there are, there are things to know going into the math trade. It can be fun. It can be exciting. And you're going to get some different games. But uh, be prepared to be just as maybe underwhelmed with what you had as what you had before. I got to know, I got to know, John, what what game did you trade for value and got bid on? Uh, well, this guy probably won't watch the show, but it's a uh, <laughs> it was a, an old Stratomatic new and shrink. It was cool. It said it was the 75th anniversary Hall of Fame edition, Sounds which legit. I looked up online and it was like 150 bucks. And then I got it. It's the 80th anniversary Hall of Fame edition, which isn't the big, cool looking box. It's just, mm. oh, it's your 80th anniversary. The other one had like a significant from the certificate from the Hall of Fame and all this stuff. And yeah, yeah the picture was just a basic straight amount stratomatic. It didn't, it wasn't, you know, but his description said 75th anniversary Hall of Fame. I'm like, did you accidentally bring the wrong game? And, you know, mm. that's all I could find online. Like, yeah, that's tough. That doesn't make sense. That's right. <laughs> and for, for, for those of you that are listening and don't understand why, why this is such a problem, I think, why, why just, just, don't make the trade then well there's 800 people that are involved in this trade and it's going yes. every which way so there's really no way to back out of it mm -hmm. which is the only unfortunate thing about a math trade is if you yes. end up in a situation like that but i'm sure yeah. you can elaborate on that a little bit later yes. <laughs> but chris what well, about you what's your experiences with the math trade all right so as usual story time with chris baby hmm. um so first of all i've been part of exactly one math trade that doesn't surprise and me and I would like to let this record show that the one math trade I was part of, I did exactly what Daniel said, and he <laughs> didn't like it when I did it. He's like, well, that's not the spirit of the game. No, the spirit of the game is to take my trash and put it in someone else's hands and get their good stuff. That's called life. <laughs> and he didn't like it, and he's finally come around to it. So first of all, don't let don't let people think that uh, that it was any different. So there's that. The reason I've only been part of one math trade is because it's the single worst user interface I have seen in anything in my entire life. It is the worst. And I know I'm like extra amped right now, but I'm telling you, I can't be more over about how much I hate that thing. It's awful. It is so bad. So somebody, somebody out there, please make a useful logical intuitive system for a math trade make an app charge five dollars a year you will make boatloads yeah boatloads somebody do it 
because I like a match trade because I like th- giving people my trash and taking their treasures, but I'm not going to go through all the rigmarole of that terrible UI. So somebody fix my problem, Google, whatever. I don't care. Or some random person in the community, I'm all for it. I'll give you my first $5. But yeah, math trades, you, if you can do it right, if you if you can get through their system, the horrible UI, and you can be like, yeah, I'm giving you, I mean, you've got 40 different copies of Uno, and you say, I want nothing but TI, maybe you'll get one copy. And if you don't, you had nothing to lose. So that's what I think that's of true. That's right. So, uh, Chris, Chris I, I feel like you memory hold me there. I don't remember giving you a hard time about putting up Absolutely your you did. You're like, really? no, no, you're all, all you did. You were like, you were like, you have all these games that suck and all you're asking is for the high tier games. He's like, you're not uh, going to make any trades. And I'm like, if I don't, oh, well, but yeah. if I do, awesome. Fair, is, like, fair, but no I, loss. I mean, I wasn't trading Bibleopoly though. Like I still was playing, like putting like- Mine were gamer games, games but they were all like sub fives that I got for like next uh, to nothing. And and I made a couple of trades. I don't remember what I got, but I did succeed in a couple. And I was like, awesome. And you were like, what? How did that even happen? I'm like, because people are stupid. <laughs> uh, Chris, mem- number one- What is memory that's... holding? What is memory holding? Is that like <laughs> gaslighting? <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. It's like putting another memory in somebody else's head. Yeah. Is that a new uh, term? Did you come up with that? I'm incepting Maybe. people. I make Ooh, up things all the time. He did it though. Like, how meta is that? He incepted us with memory hole. That's right. Whoa, my memory's a hole in them now. Oh, all right. Right. Let's your see your memory hole, holes, Andy. What are your uh, experiences with some math trades? Well, f- well, first of all, um, I'm gonna have to throw out all my notes here because. I thought it said meth trades. And <laughs> you thought we were breaking all these bad. references to uh, Walter White and, <laughs> yes. and, and and Breaking Bad and everything. And anyway, um, no math trades. Uh, they're interesting. I I like John have enjoyed the uh, the kind of giddiness of 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 waking up when the results are released and going, oh, what did I win? What did I get in my stocking? Um, However, I also have made the mistake that uh, Daniel and others have made uh, in, in the early math trades where I was trying. I was like, oh, well, I guess I'd take that. 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 And and invariably, the thing that I wanted the least is the thing I would end up with. So you have to be really picky with those things. You really do. The other thing is, I'll agree with Chris, and I I hate to keep hitting on all the points that you guys all just had, but the the interface is terrible. It's done uh, through uh, Board Game Geek, and uh, it's just... I don't know. It was just written. It looks like in the '90s, and it just is really confusing. It's it's not intuitive at all. And in fact, every math trade that comes up about every six months or every year, I have to go back and relearn yes. how to submit things and how to look at things and <laughs> look over databases. And and invariably, I will mess something up, which I did with John once. Actually, we, John and I have this interesting story. So mm-hmm. one of the things you can do is people will list the same games multiple times, right? And if you don't click this little button that says "Protect Duplicates," you very well may end up with multiple copies of the same game. And that happened to both John and I, oh, I don't know, three or four years ago, I, I ended up with More three copies of the game Coal Baron, and John ended up with three copies of the game King of Tokyo. And we're like, wow, well, what are we going to do now? So uh, one of the things we did is we, we traded him back. So he got a Coal Baron and I got a King of Tokyo. But still, it was it was a mess. So I traded away games that uh, I, I really, I, I got rid of them because I was like, eh, whatever. But I ended up with multiples and it was just, it's okay. It's I've had I've, I've had varying experiences of, of success and joy in the math trades. Just don't go into it with huge expectations. And I agree completely that you should not take something super valuable and put it in there because you're yeah. gonna get uh, yes. shortchanged oftentimes. And you might get something that's crap too. And at early on, here's one more thing. I know I'm way over time. One more thing. Early on, when I was first doing it, I was the opposite of Daniel. I did I liked my games well worn, so I didn't think anything of it when I traded away a game that was uh, yes. It, the parts were all there. Don't get me wrong, but like <laughs> the the box was pretty worn. And like we used to do this thing where we signed the box inside if you won the game, so it had a bunch of signatures in it. And the guy I traded to was like, eh. <laughs> "Yeah, your description was like new, like and new, it was, and it was oh. as worn as a twenty year old game, and it was had writing on the inside of the board <laughs> inside of the box." I think I said almost like new. I'm pretty sure you had spilled water on it at some point. No, there uh, was no water involved. Don't bring water oh, into this. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. That was that was my co- po- uh, my copy of stockpile. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got three things real quick. By the way, I absolutely love the fact that you got Coal Baron and he got King of Tokyo. So like in that moment, you each could say you were the Coal Baron. Yes. And he was the King of Tokyo. <laughs> we literally like, said that. That That's was true. super cool. And yes. then second, what wasn't it also the math trade that you got the uh, Cafe of Viticulture without a box? Uh, that was a later one. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it was a math trade though, right? 
Yes, I, it was a match rate. It was yeah, a match exactly. rate, and I, and I, I, I had not read carefully enough <laughs> that, that their copy of Viticulture did not come with a box, and so yeah. they were like, "Here's the parts." Gosh. And All then right, the guys. third part. Oh, one the third more part is oh, okay. I do. I don't want. I don't want people to think I'm talking both sides of my mouth, but I do want to be honest. Like, I despise the UT the UI, but like. Hats off to whoever actually came up with it when they did. Because it's been, like, up and running for, like, mm-hmm. 15 years. So, like, yes. I don't know how someone even made it work back then. So, yeah. like, 1980, that was, it. like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I, 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 whoever made it, again, hats off to you. Someone just True. needs to update it is all I'm saying now. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, about the duplicate protection there, Andy, because I had tried – duplicate protection was more than just click on it. You had to do some whole process to keep from getting duplicates. But they upgraded that on this last one because <laughs> – here's the thing. I had many things I was put submitting for $30 gift cards. Now, they canceled all of them but one because of duplicate protection. It goes automatic now. I'm like, no, I'll take all the $30 gift cards. Uh, don't, don't cancel those off. <laughs> so there's funny. your improvement. Yep. Well, guys, hey, I would want to say uh, Joe Coleman is a viewer of our show, and he actually is the one that runs our local math trade. So, Joe, I know you're watching. So, thank you so much for your hard work. I do know they go a lot of hard work goes into it, and they are always very successful. But hey, let us know what your experiences are in math trades. Do you like them? Are you have you washed your hands of them? Um, but just let us know in the comments. All righty. Round two. Fight. Okay, for our next segment, each of you, I've given you each a uh, monogram baseball bat that I've sent you. I hope you have it there in front of you. And Maybe. Oh, oh wait a second. I, I'm, I'm getting a message from our producer, Randy. Glad to see you got my message. Here is your random task. I need each of you to present to me the best training in the Mediterranean game in your collection. It's a random task! <laughs> Random task. Show them what you do. Drop my random task. Got it. Choo. All right. We always lose somebody from this. Oh, there he is. There he is. (laughs) Yeah, there he is. This time was Andy. Oh, man. I was was really looking forward to uh, clubbing some seals. I know, right? I had my bat already. I know. Maybe, maybe next time. I spent a lot of shipping, money and shipping getting those bats to you, too. I appreciate <laughs> I had, it. I even had a sound effect for it. Tell you what, friends. If nobody comes down and buys a car for me in the next hour, uh, I'm going to uh, club this baby seal. That's right. I'm going to club a seal to make a better deal. <laughs> oh, anytime, anytime you well, give me an opportunity to play a clip from UHF, I will take it. We'll use it next time. Maybe we'll get to it next time. There you go. All right, well... The almighty Randy has spoken, and we have been tasked with a random task of games of Mediterranean trading, the age-old, memeable genre in board games. So, all right, well, I'm going first, and today I got Veridostrum. So this is actually an old man game. Uh, I played the original back in... Uh, back in the day, one of my friends actually got a copy randomly from like Hobby Town USA back when they usually sell sub war games and stuff like that before they went RC cars. But that's whole neither here or there. Um, and so, but I didn't play it for years and years until a few years ago. I actually played the original back then, and I thought it was fantastic. Now you're thinking Mediterranean trading? It's a Civ game, but a key part of it is that it takes place in the Mediterranean, and you are trying to secure different commodities to basically eventually turn in for the things that you need the the uh the wonders or whatever to get the game run but uh but i, I want to bring it up because i i think it's a game that even though it recently got kind of reprinted and updated with the second edition of empires a few years ago i still think it's a game that kind of went under the radar and i really like it it's uh it's a it's a quick plays in two hours like it really gives you that civ feel in two hours so when you and so uh yeah i really like it uh fantastic uh andy what you got well i've got well, hold oh. on. Can I respond real quick, Chris? I sure. really thought you had this one in the bag with sit with uh, Mediterranean games. Well, yeah. But that was your pick. That's a Civ oh. game. That's not a Mediterranean game. Well, I, I mean, again, there's agree. a whole bunch of other ones I could have gone with, but I went with this one because I wanted to give it some love that I think had been missing. 
So I think, <laughs> I mean, if you want to go pure, act, straight up, the actual answer is Medici, but Medici, but, uh, but I went with this one to give some things, some additional love. So I don't know. This sounds like a Gloomhaven Chronicles it of, uh, it sounds a lot like this is situation. way closer, way maybe, closer to maybe on topic knows than Gloomhaven as a Rondell. Lot. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> but not as close as a Lupin Luby as a Rondell. That's absolutely Rondell. We all know. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go on because I could say something, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this one was super easy, guys. And, uh, you know, I know that Daniel and John haven't gone yet, so I hope I don't pick the same thing as them and, and preempt them. But it was Very easy doubtful. for me. It is one of the best board games of all time. It's number 21 on BGG. It is Concordia. It is literally a game about trading goods on the Mediterranean. And uh, it's it's just a fantastic game. If you haven't played Concordia, there are several versions. I recommend playing the Salsa version. It's a must. It adds an extra good that is a wild good. But uh, no, it's it's a fantastic game where you are a little bit of deck building. You've got different uh, uh, roles that you, you you play the cards down and do, and and you uh, have to do them in the right order. And it's kind of a little bit of push your luck, and it's uh, grab stuff off this uh, tableau up here, and and trade goods here, and uh, uh, beat people here, and uh, area control, a little bit of everything. Concordia is easily my choice for this random task. So why do they, I've always been disturbed by this. Why do they call it salsa if it's in the Mediterranean? So first of all, it's the Latin word for salt. And second Ooh. of all, why is it disturbing? Well, because it just, maybe disturbing was not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> but why did they just use the word salt? I've never understood that. It's called they, salsa, but they, then you're they, like, they hey, use... you're going to trade salt in it. And you're like, what? They use Good Latin point. for all of it. Like the 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 different gods are not so it's not like uh, Saturn and Saturnus or something like that. It's it's all it it, it is what it is. Gotcha. Some people like that historical aspect. <clears throat> I need to give this one another go. Like every single time I played it, it's just been meh to me. But people love it, so I I must be missing something. Yeah, I was okay with it, but uh, hey, but at least it's trading in the Mediterranean, unlike some other people. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well my pick is one of my top 10 games of all time. And that is this Alan Moon classic from 2004. Yeah, now who's Gosh. the old man, Chris? This guy right here. Whatever. It is called it Oasis. It is, it is a wonderful game about trading in the Mediterranean. And not only are you uh, like collecting things, you're actually trading with each other because you're going to get these cards that are wonderfully printed. See that iconography on these cards? It's just, uh, it's just perfect here. Uh, you're going to be presenting these cards as an offering to all of your uh, opponents and they are going to trade you their turn order so if you're a second player you might be like i'm going to give you my second player token for your goods and then you're going to be placing those gourd those goods on this beautiful detailed board that is as beige as all get out <laughs> but it is uh literally trading on a uh is that minecraft desert and you're making kind of looks like Minecraft. Doesn't and you're look. making paths, um, kind of like the old game Quicks. If you know what Quicks is, if you do, thank you. I thought but it was a series. Like making like a uh, grass paths, and you're trying to cut each other off and being aggressive with that. Is that and like the Dig best Dug? part about it, which makes it a truly trading game, is that it has camel meeples. Camel meeples. Come meeples. That's right. You cannot be a trading in the Mediterranean game without camels. And your goal is to make the biggest caravan of camels. The other things you're doing is you're getting scoring tokens. You're you're bidding on scoring tokens to like multiply what you have on the board. This game is yeah, the exactly. definition of trading in the Mediterranean. When you hear that word trading in the Mediterranean, they are talking about Oasis. This is a trading in the Mediterranean game. So that looks like a trading in the desert game. It does. I don't, I don't see a don't Mediterranean, Mediterranean sea. There. I don't know where the Mediterranean part's coming in there. When I it's, think trading in the Mediterranean, I think boats moving goods, not uh -huh. No, it's around the Mediterranean, not through the Mediterranean. What? This is right next to it. I don't know where it's at, but it's it's right <laughs> like in Egypt. You can Egypt pretend. has a desert, and it's, it's right next, next to the Mediterranean. To just like, <laughs> you guys... Just like just like us in Kansas City, we're right next to the mountains. That's right. Right next to Colorado. We're that close to it. You get me. Clearly, we're... Randy will get me. He'll understand. Uh, we'll see what the points say. I, I will say this. That game is so great that Daniel has to play it differently than the box says. 
No, it's he a has very to make it this giant game. like you gotta social talk about game your negotiation. Just... Whatever, man. This game is great. Underrated, under the radar. It's, it is actually a good game, but your presentation of it did nothing to sell it to anyone. That definitely is true. But I talked loudly. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Talk loudly. Speaking of talking loudly, it's my turn. <laughs> um and I have the best example of trading on the Mediterranean, which shouldn't surprise anybody because you know me with the old man gaming and the old man themes. That's all I do. And so I've got Quartermaster General World War II because not only does this game, not only does it literally have the Mediterranean Sea in the game, you can trade salvos back and forth from the Mediterranean to the Mediterranean through the Mediterranean and to the Mediterranean and, and yeah, hold your a, tongue, son. Person. And what are you what are you trading in these games? You're trading supplies. It's quartermaster general, World War II. It's a supply line to through the Mediterranean, whatever. It's a Mediterranean supply trading game. There you go. It's the best one, too, because it's a cool reenactment of World War II that's card-driven. Every card's different. Every uh, country is different, I mean. You can play up to six people. There you go. That is that is my Mediterranean trading game. All right, I'm it. actually think, impressed think, by that. Thank I you. think we need to have a meeting real quick here. Yeah, this is I terrible. Think- I think the format of this segment, we don't give ourselves enough time to actually come up with a quality game. We only got three seconds, so we just grab something off the shelf that's even randomly associated. Are you talking about Daniel's pick? Because I agree. I Correct. Correct. I My pick was the only one that followed everything to the T. And I even had a second one. I had a second one. I could have gotten Istanbul. Man, whatever. I actually had the game trading in the tigris i did think about presenting that one it's literally should have been called trading in the mediterranean and i think that would have been a slam dunk but i do want to know john is that yes. literally your only game you have that even has a picture of the mediterranean in it <laughs> well i almost went with the river but it's literally a river and not a sea so i was like i can't get away with that nah. i guess i could do black fleet black fleet is like you could pretend that's the mediterranean but... so do you really not have a mediterranean trading i game? don't have a mediterranean trading game no <laughs> uh aquatica that would work maybe <laughs> oh peak oil peak oil has the water do, do you have any, do you have any desert themed it. games because that could also be the mediterranean no <laughs> <laughs> no it can't i all right oh. chris at least had you know i followed this to the t daniel and john failed miserably chris is so so but at least he had a good backup with medici which would have been perfect gosh well let's see what uh randy says yeah you know, as a reminder, whoever wins is going to get three points. Mm-hmm. Whoever is in second will get two, and whoever is in third will get one, and the yeah. loser, John, will get zero. We'll see about that. <laughs> uh, uh, what's it, Chris? Right. You want to holler him out? See what get us. All right. Points? Well, uh, what really matters is what our dark master has decided for us. So let's see the scores. Okay, so I, I got one point. This is third place. Daniel got oh, two. Daniel's second uh, point. Uh, mine has a picture one. of the got a bad feeling about this. abstract. That's whatever. And let's I hope it's Andy, because if it's John. Come on, come on. Ah, hey, all right. Hey. At least the one that did it correctly to the T got the three points. I still think I should have got two, but whatever. At least mine has a picture of the measure. You know what? For that matter, John should have got two points. I should have or one point. I should have got two. Daniel should have got zero. No picture of the Mediterranean at all in his game. No, 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 no. You guys, come on. Let us know in the comments. You I know lost when, the point. <laughs> when, they say, when they say Mediterranean, you know what they mean. And Oasis was that. If you looked at that box, you're like, that's a trading in the Mediterranean game. You guys know it. Don't know that for a fact. All right. Well, what did you guys think? Tell us in the comments who, who sh- what the points should have actually been. And uh, what's your favorite Mediterranean trading game? Guys, I think it's time uh, Time we take a little breather here. This is yes. getting kind of heated. There's a little bit of a uh, little tension. Hey, <laughs> just easing the tension, baby. Yeah. Just easing the tension. Well, ease it on someone else. Exactly. After these messages, we'll be right back. From the creators of Around the Board comes a brand new, unique show, unlike anything you've ever seen. Hey guys, welcome to The Try, a brand new show where we'll debate board game topics and news with three of me. Wait a minute, isn't this just a ripoff of Around the Board? No, not at all. This time there are three of us, and it's all the same person. 
Uh, <laughs> listen, I'd rather not be associated with Andy one or three. Thank you very much. Hey, wh what's wrong with me? Or me, bruh. Or me, bruh. Huh, that sounds like amoeba. Oh, for Pete's sake, can we just talk about, uh, board games? Yeah. And that does it for today's show. Remember to join us soon for The Try. So what do you guys think? I, I, I'm down, right? I'll uh, I'll say this, Andy. You put the I in try, buddy. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> you betcha. Uh, for those I of mean, you I would wondering... watch the show of you arguing against yourself. I think I've seen that before, actually. <laughs> it's happened many times. It happens in so. my sleep. Um, <laughs> so, no, if, if you don't know what that's about, well, that was kind of a parody of something that we noticed happened recently. Uh, oh, really? Look over here. Hmm. Yeah, all right. What could that be? Welcome to the Quad, the new board game geek show where four <laughs> notorious characters from around the world of hobby that gaming will meet familiar, to discuss game-related topics. Where have I heard Each this one of us will argue, defend, or fight mm. to have their hey, chosen example fight. be shown to be <laughs> the right, best in the left. given topic. I'm Stephen Bonacore. I'm and Candace Harris. My name is Matthew McCat. I mean, this and is I'm Beth Hiley. Task, we right? are going to it discuss trick-taking games. I think. Okay. We this are this each this going this to tell curious. you why our example is the uh -huh. best hmm. of these games, or our huh. favorite in the genre, or what makes it special in the category. I wonder if they're going to do a trading in the Mediterranean. The quad. No. I, bet to... <laughs> I bet they do. I bet they do. Wow. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Yeah. I'd rather watch the try. I think so too. But hey, what? But what do you out there think? Which one would you rather watch? Which one do you think is better? Let us know. And more importantly, you can let them know which one you think is better. They do say, they do say guys that flattery is the, 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 uh, or really they say that imitation, you know, imitation. Is the highest form of flattery. That's it. Imitation is the that. highest. Form there of we flattery. go. So that's what they right. say. Fair. Yeah. And I, I, will, I will point out that, uh, our super fan, Troy, that's what I call you, Troy, in case you didn't know, uh, he pointed this out to us. He, he was the first one to notice this and he was like, yeah, you guys should check this out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you, uh, did you invite him on the show, Stephen Bonacore? I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'm sure it was just a happy little accident. I'm sure they didn't see. Oh, us. I'm sure it was. Oh uh, yeah. We're, we're good. We're Let's good. get back to what we are here for, guys, and that is, uh, of course, uh, well, you you know what it is. It's 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 my goodness, it's this. It's game time. Would you like to play a game? Shall we play a game? Okay, let's play the game. Round three, fight. <laughs> Yes, and in this segment, I'll be hosting the Great Game Debate. It's a segment where we look at board games of the past and see if that game still holds up to today's standards. A game that's considered great, fantastic, and for me, it's my number one game, Heaven and Ale. Let me go to Andy, where he'll share more about it. <laughs> so what do you do in this game? You are going to take your piece, and you're going to start from one of these four spots. Um, you're going to be either the first player, you're going to get uh, two extra resources, or one on your uh, brewmaster track, or two coins to start with. And you're gonna move along this rondelle, and you can go as far as you want and pick up any of these resources. If you stop here, you'll pick up this resource, and then the player behind you will then take their turn. They don't have to go to this spot, they could jump all the way down here, etc. You can never go backwards. So you're picking up stuff as you go. The thing that's interesting, as you uh, try to want more resources, let's say I really want this, uh, this green hops resource up here, um, but it's all the way up there. I have to make a decision. Do I jump up there to get it before somebody else or not? Because um, in doing so, I, I pass, forego all those resources. So you continue to do that. You go around the map with four players six times. Um, each time you put out new monks and these monk tiles, uh, that uh, determines your uh, the round order. So how do these tiles work? Well, you're going to place them on your board. A board looks like this. It's a big hex hex board. You've got a dark side and a light side. As you start placing the uh, pieces on the board, um, you're gonna spend the money to place them. So this one here, for instance, and let me go over the resources real fast. It, it is all the ingredients to brew beer, I believe. You uh, have got your uh, wheat or hops. No, wheat uh, or barley. Yeah, barley, I think. Barley, water, hops. I always wanna say rice. It's not rice, it's... Uh, uh, It's yeast, thank you. <laughs> Someone in the background told me that. Uh, wood over here, and so you're building these resources up along this track. You wanna try and get them as far up this uh, barrel track as you can, 
And at the end of the game, I'll explain how points work, but that's basically what you're trying to do. As you place these hex tiles down, you have to pay for them. So for this yeast here, you're gonna spend $3 if it's on the dark side. If you were to place it on the light side, it's gonna be twice as much, it's gonna be $6. The difference is, is that when they score on the light side, it moves the barrel up the track three spots. When it scores on the dark side, it gets you three money. You play with a super tight economy. You start with $25, and or Ducats, I believe they are. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, it's super tight, so you have to be very careful to build your engine in such a way that you can keep money flowing in without scoring too many points early and then leaving yourself in a, in a, in a mess. Um, throughout the game, you're going to score uh, each thing only one time. These are all the different spots you can score. So, for instance, right now, if I were to score uh, yeast, I would score all the yeast tiles on my board, which would just be three in the dark. They would just give me $3. I would get $3. If it was over here, I would get the yeast resource would move up one, two, three on that track there. Obviously, it's a little bit of a push your luck game because you kind of want to build your board up before you start scoring these things. But the thing that's interesting is, is to score, you have to stop on one of these spots on the board, which have these purple tokens. Once the purple tokens are gone, you can no longer stop on those spots. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six spots, and you're only going around six times. So there's 36 chances to score, and what do we have? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we've got ten things we can score. So technically, not everybody can score all ten of their things. So you're gonna run into an issue, especially in the later rounds where it's gonna be really hard to score because everybody's gonna be trying to take these spots to score. Okay, so that's how you move these things up the track. That's kind of an overview of how you score things. The way you get points, well, it's gonna work two different ways. Um, you're going to score um, based on a multiplier. So you've got something called your brewmaster down here as well. It starts down here. You wanna get him up here. Let's say he finishes here on this uh, nine. Okay, so in this spot here, you get two things. You're gonna get, uh, uh, this is this three for one thing. This means that you can move resources backwards, three spots to move another resource up one. So let's say my hops are here and my yeast is all the way up here. If I were to finish here, I could go one, two, three at the end and move that up one. And you try and do that because you're gonna get whatever your lowest resource is is what you will score. You're gonna score, in this case, the brewmaster's here, four times whatever your lowest resource is on. So if my lowest resource is on four and I'm on brewmasters here at nine, it's gonna be four times four, that'll be 16 points. Um, in addition to that, so that's one way to score points. And then the other way is by accomplishing goals, which you're gonna find out here. These are in-game goals or goals that actually throughout, happen throughout the game. And I won't go over all of them in detail, but some of them have to do with filling up different sides of the board, with scoring different things, uh, with getting your brewmaster up on the barrel track. And when you get these things done and you accomplish those, you can grab these, which are worth four victory points. The second person to do so gets a smaller barrel, which is worth two victory points. So there you have it. That is some of the basics of Heaven and Ale. There are also some cards over here that uh, some special cards that you can score. If you'll notice real fast over here, you can see that uh, these different scoring areas are built into these little uh, pairings. If you score both, end up scoring both pairings, you can then take one of your cards here and turn it in for a bonus and they do different things. So like this one, for instance, allows the barrels to be worth one extra victory point. So instead of four and two, it's five and three. So that can be very powerful if you've scored a lot of those barrels. Uh, but there's several others that do different things. Also, if you ever do run out of money at any point in the game, you can always turn this card in for three money but it goes away and you can no longer score that bonus. So there you go, a little overview of Heaven and Ale. That was pretty good, Andy, thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I, I love Heaven and Ale. Heaven and Ale is a fantastic game, it really is. And uh, what I think it does so well is it's got great replayability, it's a thinky, puzzly game, and there's tension. There's just a lot of tension, and it's and yet it's it's simple what you do, and yet it's so meaningful the actions you take. Uh, they every single action can dramatically affect everything that happens in the game for you. So uh, it is prone to a little analysis paralysis, perhaps. But Indeed. again, the simplicity of it makes it so that it's not too bad. Um, I love it. I just absolutely love Whoa. having a nail. And it's funny because again, I. I, I'm, the theme doesn't really resonate with me, but that's so the case with so many Euro games where the theme doesn't necessarily grab me, but 
the, the mechanics are just so amazing. And in this game, the mechanics are fantastic. The theme works okay. It's not terrible. There's worse. Um, you're brewing beer as a, a monk. Oh, and I didn't even think about this. I forgot. I had a little sound effect for this. Is your monks brewing beer. There That's you right. go. Right. Drunk monks. And sometimes playing the game kind of, with me at least, feels like that, where you're just kind of hitting yourself like, oh, gosh, is he going to take his turn or what? <laughs> but, uh, no, it's a fun game. Very tight economy, very uh, uh, meaningful choices. Um, it it does, the, like I said, the theme's not sexy, but it, 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 it works. Um, heaven and Nail. Uh, it's a winner for me. It's, like I said, number one on my list. What do you guys think, uh, Andy, John? W- w- would you like it better if it was He-Man themed? Just, there you I go. don't know. I heard you were uh, into He-Man. Like He-Man brewing beer? Yeah, sure. Why not? Trying to stop him. Or I'm Eternia like, juice. What else is it Eternia called? Eternia juice. I, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Well, let's get right. right to Daniel and go to John. Well, uh, no, uh, we'll we're going to go to me. I know. I it's know. been 22 episodes. Andy we do go around we the go board. Around the board. I just, just give me some sense. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm I'm in the camp of Andy. I really enjoyed Heaven and Ale. I think we kind of discovered it at the same time. I think Andy found the game. Uh, maybe it was taught to us. I don't remember. I just know that he latched onto it a lot quicker than I did, but it, I did enjoy it. And the more I've played it, I've grown to appreciate it. It is a really challenging game as far as like tight consequences. And uh, it's funny that Andy mentioned the slapping yourself in the face because like my first point is the anxiety that this this game gives you, which is good in games. Like you want that anxiety. You want to you want to stress over. Did I make the right decision? And, um, you know, did I go too far down the path? I don't know. Only time will tell. Also, how the scoring is set up where those like there's like six pieces that are limited and then you go around the board three times. So there's most uh, six times three is 18. There's only 18 opportunities to score your pieces. And that is, that's like, that's like stressful. Cause you go, okay, I'm not at the optimal point where I want to score yet, but if I don't do it now, I may never get to score again. So you're always trying to decide when you want to do that. And, um, and then the, 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 the monks placements is also really fun because when you trigger the monks, it triggers things around it. So when I played against John in, um, and uh chris i kind of had like i saw the matrix i had one of those moments where my eyes opened and i was like oh my gosh and i just had perfect placements and i was triggering monks left and right and left and right and i was just getting all the resources and even the way that the resources are generated in this game is so clever because it's like you move around the track and then you move your monk around as well and then you kind of sub- you you um multiply your monks place it with your lowest resource and if you get them all to match up, you get a perfect score. This is a game where you can actually get a perfect score. You can bowl a 300. You can pitch a perfect game. How many games can you say that about? That's pretty exciting to me. Well, point of order, a couple things, Daniel. First of all, hey, I agree with many, you. How many exactly. players you play with depends how many times you go around the board. So with four players, it's actually six times around the board. Uh, oh, okay. three, I believe is with two players. Um, second of all, I disagree that you can bowl a perfect game in this because you cannot always solve the puzzle because you don't know what the other opponents are going to do and what they're going to take. And there's varying strategies. And that's what's so great about it is you have to look at what other people are doing and uh, react accordingly. And the board is laid out each time differently because the resources are on different squares. Anyway, I'm sorry. Oh, I agree. But I'm not saying like it's an, uh, it's not like full of choices. You still have to get there. But I'm just saying there is a max in the points, right? Because if your lowest resource meets your guy at the very end on the 20 spot, that's the most points you can get in the game. I, I've never seen anyone do that, but yes. But, sure. but you could. It's on there. Challenge accepted. That's all I got to say. Okay. <laughs> John, John, what about you? Oh, hey, it's my turn. Um, so <laughs> glad you guys are having a little love fest over this game. But I was just thinking if Seals and Cross said we may never come this way again, as Andy, as Daniel was talking about, hey, you may never pass by that chance to score again. But Really, this game, when you say the theme doesn't speak to you, give me a break. There is a theme to this game. I'll tell you what it is. It's Algebra the Board Game, because that's what Heaven and Ale is. You've got your little numbers here that you're putting around your fields. You're like, oh, well, this is an eight and an eight. I need a, I need a two. What? Wait, wait a minute. That one's got a four and a seven. If I need that seven, seven and four times X, is what, okay, so I need that one. But if I can't get that one, I can get that one, which is another number. And so that number can go here with it. It's all numbers. It's numbers. Put numbers together. You got numbers to put numbers to put numbers over numbers with numbers. And that's what Heaven and Ale is. There's no theme at all. There's no drunk monks. There's no brewing beer. There's none of that stuff. There are monks. There's pictures of monks. <laughs> and monks are very powerful in this game, as our friend uh, Kent O'Connor would probably be very happy about that. 
but he's not a monk. <laughs> he's closest one I know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but yeah, Daniel proved that in the game that we played because uh, you know when you're it was I play I've had one play of it and that's probably going to be it. I would play it again because it is a decent game, but it is, it's number crunching and it's doing numbers with numbers to make numbers, and just know that's what it is going in. But with the monks, they are very powerful. And when, when Andy might've talked about them, the explanation of this game, where what I thought the monks were was you put all the monks on your board and whatever they're next to, when you activate the monk, you get those numbers, you get those numbers and that's it. You're done with the monks for the rest of the game. I didn't realize that they could score when they're around the fields and all that. So, Oh, well now they are really powerful. I was putting them around their fields just to make less points because in my algebraic mind, I'm like, well, I can't have any more points around this field because I need to score X and that one needs to score X plus two. And that one needs to score X plus three minus five. And then you can get some points going a decent game. Is it one of the best games? Is it a great game? I don't think so. Just because John. literally there's no theme. I mean, some games are halfway themeless, it's numbers. That's your theme is numbers. That's, no, that's, there are, that's literally you are, it. You what are, are you incorrect. doing that's anything like brewing beer or growing? You, you are incorrect. You Not have the theme. different resources that make up what you need to do to brew beer. So you've got your yeast. The, you've the got resources your resources are numbers. Your... The resources but, are literally numbers with different no, colors that you put on your board. That's all it is. Your, com- your point is completely invalidated because I hate algebra. I failed it like three times in college and I love this game and I haven't failed it yet. Chris, how about you? <laughs> it it failed you. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I guess you failed three times in college because I assume you took it four times in high school because you're supposed to do algebra in high school, not college. So whatever. It's like different uh, types of algebra. <laughs> so I, I agree with John here. Like uh it's the the, the the it's it is numbers the game. I, I have no problem with that. I, I I unlike John, I actually don't care about theme. It is it absolutely doesn't matter to me at all. It can only be the cherry on the top. I've talked about it before. So if it's there, cool. If it's not, I don't care. So that doesn't bother me. What bothers me about this game is you are punished for doing well. You 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 find you get the right numbers, you get the high numbers, you, you get there, and oh, oh, I did really good. Sweet, it's gonna be awesome. Oh no, the thing that you need actually doesn't move up because you did too good. That's stupid. And then the monks, these monks are like D D 5e monks. They are superheroes. They are stupid powerful. Uh and and and, 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 and Daniel was talking about it like, oh hey, early on in that game we played, he's like, hey guys, sorry, I, I figured this game out, so it's yeah. gonna suck for you. We're like, <laughs> oh, okay, cool, that's fine. That happens. I like games that punish the people that don't know what they're doing. It re- that means that game requires thought, and it's not some sort of simple, dumb modern board game where everyone re- kisses each other and there's rainbows and, and flowers and everything like that. <laughs> I want a game that's punishing and difficult, but it was so frustrating the way it was because it was all but these stupid monks. And, and and when you play them, then it activates that. And we just didn't understand it. So it was fine. It's just the game's kind of in balance because the monks, they're too, they're, they are just too powerful. But if you know that, it's probably okay. Uh, okay. But, but, but I will say this about the perfect game that only works when you're Daniel, you're playing with people who have no idea what you're doing. Yes. And the reason it works is because you take your turn back three or four times and keep <laughs> reactivating the monks. That's what he was doing. He actually was just straight cheating and not even doing using the monks like he's supposed to. He was using them like multiple times, I'm convinced. Because mm-hmm. every turn he was like, I'm going to use this monk, then I'm going to use this monk, then I'm going to use this monk. We're like, oh, cool. I, I took a wheat. That was a two. <laughs> All right. My are turn's you, over. Are, are you guys playing the same game as me? Are you using the monks correctly? I don't, I don't know. know. You're I not. played with Daniel, and they were like superheroes. That's no, wait a minute. I, I think you're using the monks incorrectly Let because me we did this when I screwed. Me... When I first played it, I screwed it up too, and I think you're it, screwing it up. The it monks, when a monk activates a monk, all it does is move your brewmaster up one. Correct. It doesn't yeah. activate everything around that second monk. Were you playing gotcha. it like that? No. But the monks activate when your fields activate. When you're when you're pointing at the what things can activate. If it points at a monk, you activate the building. The when you when you complete a building, yes, you can choose to activate a monk. When yes. you activate that monk, all it does is move your brewmaster one spot. That's it. That's it. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Cheated. You Bang. said when it points at a second monk. Whenever no, yeah. a monk, the only time a monk activates everything around it is when you score that monk. Oh, there oh. we go, Chris. We didn't lose by as much as we thought. 
okay, well, I was feeling pretty good about myself because I was like, I, I'm amazing. Oh, we noticed. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> yeah, you were having a grand old time over there. We're taking 20 minute turns and we're like, yep, got my wheat. All right, moving on. So I, was I had a right. feeling. I had a feeling this the way you were talking. I was like, no, you guys are playing this game totally wrong. Okay, well, in Monks fairness... Monks are not that powerful. They're fun, but they're not, like, superheroes. Okay. Gotcha. Well, in fairness, I never read the rules. This is a situation where Andy always <laughs> taught me the game. I'm not blaming you, Andy, but I'm just saying I've never read the rules myself, so I was like, this sure. is how it works. I'm pretty sure. It's like the Monopoly effect. I'm pretty sure. You, you play it so many times the wrong way, you're just like, oh, this is the way you do it, and then you teach somebody else, and then they're like, yeah, that's how, that's how you play Monopoly. Why is and it that when I say something in a game, like, I'm pretty sure this is how it works, I can never get away with it, but you somehow can. Uh, because no one read the books. Well, my apologies to uh, John and to Chris, um, mm-hmm. but it's still not very far. Just how much I beat them is, I think, the only thing that really changed about that well, game. Well, or that you well, wanted to And, and the know, experience but... with the game that you gave them. You, you gave well, them a crap experience. No, well, it didn't sure. change anything. And, and even that aside, like, it, it really didn't change anything for me. It, it's fine. Like, I think it's 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 a fine game. I wasn't blown away by it, but it, I, and I like the fact that it has the Tiger and Euphrates where you score the lowest thing. Like, that was cool. I like I always like the mechanic. So, what, what were you fine. saying? I wasn't blown away by that, though. Chris, what were you saying about being punished for having something? I was I, I was missing your oh, point there too. Because like when you're when you're finishing the um the the towns or whatever it is the buildings uh-huh. like based the higher the more you have numbers like if you have like the seven the six the five the four it's like oh you got eighteen plus so you don't get the thing you actually need. Oh, like, oh I, see, again again it's all about balance. You're playing it wrong. I think I, I'm not saying you're playing it wrong, but the, the thing is is you have to I know, know what, what they're you're trying doing. to drive home. I just didn't like it. Like I thought it was a frustrating mechanic. Because so. actually, if you what's really powerful is building a city that has twenty four plus and it activates four hexes around it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you need to get like a seven, so that you can move your brewmaster. Brewmaster up, up six. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, they didn't balance. like that. To... They didn't like that a small field uh, was just as important as a big field, which I don't right. quite understand. That they're just oh, different. I didn't care about that. I was just tired of doing all the math all the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, guys, that's enough about having a nail. What do you think about? Yes, the game? it is. Um, again, number one on my list. Apparently, not so much on uh, John and Chris's list. Daniel likes oh, it. Okay, no, it was fine. That was fine. Uh, I like right. it a lot. Leave us, leave us your comments below, and uh, tell us where you think having a nail ranks. Um, we're going to continue though with the uh, the old program. Round four, fight. <laughs> All right, round four is where we get back into the top 20 best-selling board games of all time. The finale, guys. We're getting through them all this time. One way or another, we're getting through every game. How's that sound? These ones shouldn't be that hard to get through, I don't think. You know? And we're going to start with number eight. And then, uh, but first, let's take a quick review of the ones that we've done so far. Andy, in your professional voice, can you tell us the top ones that we've gone through so far? Number 20, it's Cranium. Number 19, Blockus. Number 18, Connect 4. Number 17, Moncala. Number 16, Stratego. Number 15, Risk. Number 14, Catan, 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 Settlers. Number 13, Pictionary. Number 12, Othello. Number 11, Life. Number 10, Rummy Cube. And number 9, Candyland. Yes. What's number 8? And now for number 8, we have... Backgammon. With 88 million units sold so far, came out in the year 3000 BC. Can you believe that? It was a good and year. My knowledge of backgammon, nice. I'll have to say, is kind of limited to uh, to the movies because I've never played it, but I've seen it played. And more specifically, I'm a huge James Bond fan. And in the movie Octopussy, he plays against the heavy. And so as far as I know, all you do in backgammon is roll two dice because that's all they do. Three, three different people play this game and all they do is roll two dice and whoever rolls 12 wins. I'm sorry, not 12 double sixes you have to roll double sixes to win mr bond and so it's not 12 it's not box cards it's double sixes and so he uses the guy's loaded dice and he rolls the double sixes and then puts the faberge egg out on the table Uh, anyway that's just part of the movie but has anybody actually played backgammon because i've not so as far as i know you roll 12 you win i don't know is there more to the game than that does anybody know yeah i used to play it a lot as a kid actually it was like probably one of my number one played games um yeah t- truly um but it's been so long since i played i really can't explain it i just know that you would roll two dice and you get to move two pieces and your goal is to like s- like land on somebody else's color like by themselves and you would send them back to the to the beginning um so yeah I, I, and your goal is to get all the way to the other side 
Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed backgammon. I think it's still a clever game. I, I would imagine it still holds up. I do want to play it again. But you made a pop culture reference, John. I want to as well. Okay. I really enjoyed the reference to backgammon in Lost. When the very first episode, Locke is looking at the two pieces and he talks about good and evil. Gotcha. Oh, it's one of the best moments in television. Very Once good. the series was over and you realize he explained the entire series by backgammon. There you go. Awesome. Two players, two sides. One is light. It's dark. Very good. Any of you other two long kids? I, have you played backgammon? I haven't played it. It sounds a little bit like craps, though. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I, and the I, fact I, that you're rolling two dice. That's about all it. All right. We're really gonna have to play this, guys. I think it's a good game. We're we're gonna okay. play that next episode. We'll have it, we'll have we'll have had it played. All right. All right. Well, let's move on to number seven. Let's do number seven is Trivial Pursuit, baby. 100 million units sold. We've, we finally reached the 100 million mark. Came out in 1981, so everybody knows about this game. Trivial Pursuit. This was a game that just took the world by storm. Gamers, non-gamers, what have you. If there were gamers back then. we could, Our family considered ourselves gamers. But Trivial Pursuit, here's one thing that happened really interesting with us. is We had these uh, losers that used to hang around our apartment that were a friend of my uh, roommate's. And they literally sat in the apartment trying to memorize the Trivial Pursuit cards and trying to find a pattern so they could, and they thought they had it. And so you know, I'm quite a bit older than these guys. You know, I'm like, you guys are losers. I could beat you without even doing it. And sure enough, I beat them without ever <laughs> memorizing the answers to the cards. So that was my best play of Trivial Pursuit ever. Mostly I don't like this game. You're trying to get that one pie and you're moving around and it's, it's pretty annoying, but what do you guys think of Trivial Pursuit? I hate trivia. <laughs> like, it's just that simple. Like, like wow. the trivia that they used to have at Buffalo Wild Wings back in the day when Buffalo Wild Wings was awesome, like up on the TVs and stuff where you had like, it would pop up and then you'd have like 30 seconds to pick your choice. And the quicker you chose, you got some more points than people enjoyed. That was awesome because I was eating wings. There but like, go. otherwise, I hate trivia. I want to do anything but trivia. I'll rather, I'd almost rather play Candyland. Like, I, I just hate trivia i love trivia it's actually one of my favorite like genres of games um and i and while like trivia pursuit so hard if you get like a specific one like i really want to play dungeons and dragons trivia pursuit i actually might pick that one up i've been looking at it going ooh, philip wow. will play it with me <laughs> trivia pursuits okay and i had i fond memories of playing it as a kid mostly i, I remember playing with the little plastic pieces with the pie pieces and i remember liking that a lot yeah. um but that's about it you just uh, like it because it's pie i do but <laughs> as far as trivia games there's so many better trivia games out there now True. um the one that sticks out for me that probably has been a lot of fun is uh bezer wizard that's that's a fun one because or timeline challenge that's a good timeline one. challenge is also a great great uh, trivia game i do like trivia i unlike chris i i like trivia a lot but uh, well i mean like timeline i like, I like that and you could also say maybe like time's up's also kind of trivia but it's mm. not right like mm. so like the, i like those bit. i just don't like the do you know the answer to this question yes. like, this is stupid but, <laughs> but like <laughs> oh good point yeah i wonder if the 100 million figure on there includes garage sales because yeah uh, they're in yeah. every single uh flea market and garage sale you've ever been to or like every <laughs> uh salvation army yes everyone yeah. every thrift store has about 80 of them <laughs> well, let's All let's right. move it along let's, what's let's uh, do number what's number six here we've got one. waiting for the oh okay we're not gonna that? get a oh you're why? i don't want why it. would you wait for him the drum roll? i don't want it oh. but i'm waiting for it here it is <laughs> We had a moment to escape it. <laughs> Number six is Battleship. Again, with 100 million units sold, but a little bit more than Trivial Pursuit. Came out in 1940, I'm sorry, 1931. And we all remember that classic cover with the uh, mom and the daughter washing dishes back in the background while the son and his dad are there playing a game that they could play with two pieces of paper and a pencil, but they got... <laughs> it's when life is had it as was as it should be you know there and you the go. women were doing the work wow. and the boys were playing the board games yes. everybody was happy in the picture i just love that but, cover like the women were just as happy as the guys i know that's <laughs> why everybody right. was happy drying dishes is just as good as battleship oh i just but, love the fact that i'm doing the dishes and they're playing a game life couldn't be better i, I have guys. theories i have theories that they were slowly poisoning them there was life insurance in <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> Uh, uh, I, uh, I Battleship's have a, story about... a fine game. I played it as a kid a little bit. It's mm -hmm. been it's been greatly improved upon with the uh, the game uh, uh, Captain Sonar. It replaces yeah. it for me. 
Okay. Definitely. I actually, we played it a lot. Me and my dad played it a lot because he was in the Navy. So he actually really liked this game. He kind of got excited to play it with me. And he would, I mean, it is what it is, right? But it was kind mm. of a cool, like, childhood memory to remember yeah. the times I played with my dad. So. Did you guys listen to In the Navy while you were playing? Yeah. No, yeah. we listened to The Doors. Oh, nice. Good music. Oh, the so. Doors. That's much better. Jim yeah, we've got the uh, we've got the Star Wars battleship now that I play with my son Ooh. once in a while. I had I had the Star Wars battleship when I was a kid that had like the sounds and everything. Oh, that nice! Was, that that's cool. cool. Never had that. That would have been that we we yeah. I thought that looked awesome when I was a kid. But okay, that's enough battleship. Let's let's look at number five. Number five is Clue with 150 million units sold and at least one movie made, and it came out in 1949. The old classic Clue. I think everybody has played this and. And uh, it's it's a pretty fun game for an old game. You know what I mean? The worst part is the roll and move when uh, you're trying to get somewhere and you keep rolling a one or a two. And there's literally nothing you can do on your turn. I'm stuck in the hallway for three turns. That's so nice. All you guys are exchanging information. All my life, this game is like 80% there. And I don't know what that missing 20% is, but there's 20% that's missing there that would make this game phenomenal. But like, mm. it's just... It's just missing something. What is phenomenal, though, is the movie Clue. One of the best movies of all good. time. Apparently, good. they're making a Fantastic. remake of the movie. Oh, are they? Yeah. When did the original come out? I haven't seen I'm it. Worried about that. Eighties, right? The, the original Clue. Game. We just talked about when the game came out. No, the, he means the movie. The movie. Yeah, it was the eighties. Yeah, it was fantastic. Is uh, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd in it? Um, is Miss Curry. Scarlet hot? So good. Yeah. <laughs> I always had the hot. Sure, from remember her name. She's a famous actress. But okay. it's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, you should watch the movie. It's fantastic. Yeah, 1985. Just looked it up. So. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Perfect. There you go. Royals World Series champs. Yep. Ooh, ooh. Oh, has anybody played a themed clue? I've never played one of the themes. Uh, no, either. Uh, Simpsons. I, I played the Simpsons clue. I played that a lot, okay. actually. That was my go-to those, clue game. Some of those themed like clue the games go for a lot of different. money, man. Yeah. That's you insane. know, I realize it's funny. We've been talking about these are the games I played as a kid. I realized I played a lot of board games as a kid. They were mm. all Hasbro. I'm just so angry that I missed that boat. How did I not know about German games at the time? Ah, uh, so go. much missed opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> well, if only the Germans had won World War II. They knew the app. That would have helped. Yeah. But in quartermaster generals, maybe they can. Maybe they can. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's go. No, to the none next. of the other games offered that. All right. What are we up to? Number, number four. Three. No, we're up to number four. Scrabble with 150 million plus sold. Came out in 1938. Scrabble is still fun. Scrabble is a fun game. I don't know if you guys ever played it much. I remember when I played it for the first time at my in-laws and they had no idea how to play. I mean, they played it, but you don't play Scrabble by looking at your tiles and trying to make a word. You play it by looking at the board and trying to get to the score spots. They were doing it backwards. You don't just try to, oh, I've got the word loser. Where can I fit it on the board? No, you say, oh, there's an R and an S. What can I fit in there to make a word to get over that triple word score? And so... There's a right and a wrong way to play Scrabble, but it's fun and it's a fun little word game. I'm sure it's probably one of Daniel's best games. Well, That's you guys know I am for every, for I'm reason. a master. <laughs> yeah, I'm a master of the English language, and yes. spelling is right there with it. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the game's dumb because again, it uh, exactly what you said. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what is actually strategic and everything like that, which is, mm -hmm. I guess, fair. But it, I don't know if, if I, again, it, Scrabble's up almost up there with Trivial Pursuit with me. I just don't oh. like it. Uh. I, I just want to like let, just let me make some dumb joke letters and put some words together and make a funny word and call it a day because uh, like I, if I'm anyone that's really pushing their brain playing that game is that's really silly. Let's play a different game. Wow. So, so my biggest problem with Scrabble is um, some subjectivity into what is allowed, and I played with too many people that were didn't didn't follow the actual rules. And if you follow the actual rules and use the Scrabble uh, uh, official dictionary. I'm all for Scrabble, but too many people were you know, trying to bend and break things. And this is a yeah. book is a word. And that was yeah, you're supposed to agree ahead of time what dictionary you're using. It doesn't have to be the Scrabble one, but you have to agree this is the dictionary. Because you have to, if you check it, you have to look it up. So you have to have a book that you're looking up. You can't say, it's not in this, I'm going to look in this one. No, you have to have one book that you're going to use. As I like to use the clean right. dictionary personally. That'll work. Yeah. You know, if there, if there was like rules for like, Top if dog. you look it up and you're wrong, you lose points, I'd be in for it. But Ooh, that's oh, that that's what we need every penalty. game when we play with Andy. You, wait, no, that, that's actually a rule, isn't lives. it? If you're yes. challenged, you lose if you're your challenge. You lose your turn if you're wrong. Ah, and you lose yeah. a timeout as well, right? 
Yes. Right. And you only have two. So I don't remember. I know sports ball. Throw your flag. Oh, right. (sighs) All right. Scrabble's been replaced by Scrabble's been. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. More things to say. I'm sorry. Scrabble has been replaced by a a much easier game, easier and harder. It still itches the same uh, 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 part of my brain. And that is Quirkle. It's an abstract uh, version of Scrabble where it's colors and shapes. Also a game I can spell. Yeah. (laughs) And 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 a nod off to a nod off a, a, a thumbs up to or a, a mentioning an honorable mention goes to the game. Uh, what's the card game? The deck builder. <laughs> Magic the Gathering. Nope. The deck builder. Uh, that's scrap- paperback. 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 That's Thank it. You. Paperback. That's kind of a Third fun. Times a charm. Okay. Yeah. You know, Corkle is fun, but it really plays a number on Randy's shape uh, shape blindness that he has. His what bl- right. language? Shape blindness. <laughs> All right, right, number three with 275 million units sold. And that's just the base version. Wingspan? Came out in 1935, and that is Monopoly, baby. The king, the grandfather, the granddaddy of us all. There would be no games if there wasn't for Monopoly. So there you go. How about... You know what's funny about Monopoly? Everybody always brings it out saying, you know, it was it was brought out to tell you how bad monopolies were and how capitalism is evil. Well, it's a game, whatever. It's it's just a it's just a it's if if that's what it was for, it did a bad job because it's like, hey, I won, baby. <laughs> you never felt bad about winning, did you? I don't <laughs> like it because it perpetuates the old white rich man narrative. Is that what it does? Yes, with the monocle. Because, because he's featured in the thing. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Mr. I, Mr. Was his name Moneybags? Mr. Moneybags? Pennyworth. Mr. Monopoly, I think. He's like, it's Uncle Something, I think it's what it's called. But I don't know if he has a name. He has a name? Yeah, it's like, I don't know what the somebody. name is. Yeah. Pennyworth <laughs> but, was the clown in It, wasn't it? Yeah, Pennywise. <laughs> Pennywise was. Oh, it's oh. just as torturous. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen the movie? The truth oh, is, this game is fine. It, it just it, it there's the only game for about forty five minutes to an hour, and then you're just simulating, physically simulating the next six <laughs> hours, and it's yeah. awful. Uh, so it, it just needs to be quicker. It just needs to be like whoever has the we, Daniel and I recently talked about this, like to a person that's kind of a gamer. But anyways, uh, we were like, I think the fix is just you play until someone until all the properties are owned, and whoever has the most money at that moment wins. Like, and then. And, and then maybe no. it would be something, but yeah. And no. then also people play with the rules wrong and it's annoying. So you got to drive everybody into the ground to win that game. There's no, no, there's no, I, I will say this. If you guys want to feel like a monop- win, if you wanted a monopoly tip, I'm going to give you this one. It blows everybody's minds, but you gamers out there, you probably know this. The buildings are limited. So don't mm-hmm. build hotels. You buy, you build four houses. And then when you're a opponent and you trade somebody and say, Hey, I'll give you this. So you can have a monopoly. And they're like, great. I'm going to start building houses. I took all the houses. There is mm-hmm. none left. And yeah. they go, oh, true. When I that, think that, of Monopoly. That's not easy, though. You have to have a lot of Monopolies and buy a lot of houses. But. When I think of Monopoly, I think of death by a thousand houses. <laughs> that's right. So One thing, though, I, re- I really will say this. I wish I could get a copy of the Landlord game that Monopoly is based yes. off of. Like, it I want to see looks what better. that game actually is. There's so many extra more spaces, and I like. I just mm. want to know what that game actually is. So. I thought well, so, too. Talisman I thought adds it looks extra way better. spaces, too, but I heard that doesn't make it better. So what? <laughs> what? Talisman? Which is like thematic <laughs> yes. monopoly. Oh. oh, okay. I will say uh, one Rich of the things Uncle Money Bags that, or Penny Bags, that's his name. Rich Penny Uncle Penny Bags. Bags. Yes. One of the things that Monopoly taught me as a kid, I remember doing this, is I remember I the very first thing I would do is I would take a five hundred dollar bill and I would hide it under the board so that I pretended I didn't have it. <laughs> I wish I still did that. I wish oh, I, I thought you made you stole it from the bank. Yeah, I was like, this, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do when you rob a bank is you're supposed to hide the money so people don't know you took it. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so I think we're done with this one. Next yes. two, we're going to do them together, right? Because they're sure, essentially why the same not? game. Number two, at estimated 50 billion units sold. And number one, with it's unknown, but it's 3 million per year in the U.S., they came out in 3000 and 1200 BC. No, 3000 BC and 1200 AD, respectively. The checkers and chess, baby, with chess being number one. What do you guys think about checkers okay, and chess? Wait a second. Checkers at the same 50 game, by billion? the way. 50 billion and 50 like. 50 billion. They, okay, and they estimate 3 million a year in the US, I guess, alone. Do they know how many million are in I don't a know billion? if they know how many 50 billion is. That's a lot. Like, that's. 
Wow. Okay. They probably I, I mean, failed algebra like yes, I did three times. It's an older. I mean, not maybe it's not. It probably is an older game. You would think because it's simpler, right? And then someone built upon checkers with chess, but I don't know. Supposedly, also the story behind chess being built was some guy like was tasked with telling the queen that his like her do- his son had died in battle, and he was like, "If I go tell her, she's gonna murder me." And so he made up chess to like slowly like ease her into it. And halfway through the game, she realized she's like, "Wait, my son's dead, isn't he?" And he's like, y- "Yeah," <laughs> and he was fine. But supposedly that's the story of how chess came about. I don't know. Really? I yeah, I've not uh, heard that. Nice. I have never heard that either. I really uh, thought for a long time that checkers that chess was just the expansion to checkers. <laughs> <laughs> Tell wow. me I'm wrong. Come on. It's the same <laughs> game. Literally the same game. Chess, it ain't checkers. Come on. I was actually uh You know what? I, was... I agree because it's like Catan to settle the sets like settlers of Catan to cities and knights. You had a fine game, and then it was like, oh, let's make it unbelievably more complicated for no reason. Checkers is not a fine game. Checkers is a terrible game. <laughs> fine. Chess is a fine game. <laughs> yeah, Checkers um, I was is literally the, broken. Uh... You can just play to a ca- like a stalemate every single time. <laughs> What's that, right. in Checkers? But yeah. it ends, unlike ch- chess, that just takes forever. If it, you don't, uh, not always. Not if you're playing not if you're with playing somebody good. good. Well, I was yeah, in, uh... if you're playing evenly matched, it takes a while. So, anyways. I was in a chess club in high school, so there you go, baby. <laughs> so this but, is a uh, random shout out, uh, not a sponsor at all, but I'm going with my wife on our 10 year anniversary to Memphis and Nashville here uh, later this week. And there's a place in Memphis called the Memphis Chess Club, and it's like downtown in like this nice old building, and they have oh, like cool. little like like it's like a like boutique of like food or whatever like that, mm-hmm. and then they have all these chess boards. I don't know if it's that like, sounds pretty cool. To- like a, a cover charge or an annual membership or something like that, but I'm definitely going to check it out. So you should bring a real board game and leave it. This there. coming week, randomly, <laughs> I may see you. <laughs> Chess Club uh, John approves. That's a weird flex, John. You should, uh, yeah, maybe record a little bit about it. We'll have it on the show. All right, get your phone out. And say, hey, this is this cool place. That'd be pretty neat. All right. Well, I think that's it for that. Let us know what you think of Chess and Checkers and all these other games that were on the list is i think checkers got ripped off there i think i think i think chris is right i think it's got the most sales but the math doesn't you tell us what sense. you think tell us if there's any of them on there that you still play that'd be cool too but it's time to announce our winner and let's see here we've got two people with 14 points that would be chris and daniel good job that's actually a good score i got 12 i think it's because i got hosed on my Mediterranean game which i think was better than most but our winner 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 is andy with 16 points our very own chicken dinner now we got a hope and pray he has something to say andy what do you got for us there buddy well thanks guys i am super excited to be talking to you right now i did not plan anything to talk about so i'm just going to think of the first thing that comes to mind peanut butter i love jiff peanut butter i'm kind of addicted to it i uh i eat it half right every day it's like something i like i go to and go okay i'm done with my meal i'm like i i need a little something more still spoonful of peanut butter i'll go to that almost every time chunky smooth uh, i'm a smooth guy oh i gotta have chunky i'm a smooth and i and can't GIF, say i'm surprised it has to be jiff too it, it can't be any other brand nothing Hashtag quite compares. Not a sponsor. would love to send us yes. that jiff money Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. Get some Jeff. Money. I don't care if it's Peter Pan. I don't care if it's Reese's. I don't care what it is. Definitely not great value or something like that or Aldi. It's got to be Jeff, baby. Jeff all the way. It should be a controlled substance, actually. I really think it should be. <laughs> Any of so, you ever tried that, is, like, actually. all natural peanut butter where it's, like, almost liquid? Oh, you can, yeah. like, What's dump it that? out. Like That is so bad. It? It's it's actually okay, but it's not it's it's not as addictive as Jif. Uh, the other thing, I, for a while there, I was getting real healthy and I was eating uh, almond butter, and that was pretty oh. good. But, mm. uh, yeah, that doesn't sound good at all. I, have you guys ever had that one where it's the peanut butter and the jelly in the same goober, jar? goober grape? Yeah, ever had that? It's, I, it's I never weird. did because it just seemed overpriced. And when I was a kid, one time I was like, you know, being a kid in the grocery. Hey, this store, is my like, segment. Uh, no, it's over. This is my st- oh. I felt like you were done talking about peanut butter. <laughs> well, I was going to talk next. I was going to talk about Uncrustables and I was going to talk about oh, okay. peanut butter toast and peanut butter crackers. Well, too bad. I want to hear Chris's story, story now. Well, there's no, salt tea. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Next time I'll uh, come up with a better topic. Okay. Although Anyways, that might have been entertainment segments. Off the shelf and broke it and I felt real bad. Oh. What'd you break? Terrible. 
One of those, uh, the, the 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 jelly and the peanut butter together. The goober. Was a kid being a kid in the grocery store, you know, and I knocked it off, and those are like way more expensive than the regular. Uh, did you did and... you confess it and go pay, or did you run? Oh no! Like my mom was right there, and she saw it all, and it was not great. <laughs> did you run away? Oh well, no! But I felt real bad. And his mom ran away. Yes, <laughs> I don't know this kid. <laughs> Just pushed him over and ran. <laughs> is there a peanut butter and jelly themed uh, board game? I'm sure there is. Oh, I don't know. Tell us in the comments below. There you yes, go. Exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think there's some regulations. Yeah, you're right, John. It is something we've all been looking forward to. Well, I'm looking forward to the definition of relegation. All right. Well, perfect. I got your answer there, Ted. Uh, definition of relegation is in English soccer. There are multiple different leagues. If you do really bad, you move from your league down, uh, down a ladder. If you do really well, you move up to the ladder, except unless you're in the Premier League, you're already at the top of the uh, mountain. So all you can do is go down. So what we're doing is we're looking at that in regards to the top 100 board games on Board Game Geek. Uh, and recently, uh, I looked at it just today, and we have a new one. Uh, we looked at this recently, and Lords of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth had popped off from 99 down to 101 or 102. And Ennis had jumped all the way up to 99, leaving Dominion Intrigue at still 100, which we thought was interesting. But today, when we checked it... Ennis is still there, but Dominion Intrigue has fallen off because the new hotness of 2022, Heat Pedal to the Metal, is now at number 100, which is quite impressive to, to make that top 100 in just uh, a year year's time or so. So congrats to that game. I've been wanting to play it. I haven't yet. I'm honestly, I kind of don't want to because I'm worried it's going to be like take the, take the throne away from Formula Day, but... I don't think it'll happen, but, I, but I'm a little worried because people talk about it really good and the stuff I've seen, it does seem pretty cool. So congrats to uh, Heat for uh, making it up and unfortunately, I apologize for that relegation Dominion intrigue. Your time is over. Yeah. Uh, right. Heat. I will say I was actually excited for Heat. Um, I think it's cool to see Days of Wonder back on the top 100. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah, it's yeah. Uh, they've they've been lacking for a while, so they finally got one to zoom right into first or right into the top 100. But I still think Earth is on its heels, and I checked Earth, and it's at 338. So yeah. keep an eye out for that one. I sure yeah. it's coming in hot. Yeah. Heat, All right. Heat is, heat is really good. That's and yeah, like you say, Days of Wonder always has amazing uh production. So I gotta play that. I've got really cool. I've got so many games I gotta play, but heat is heat I've got to check out. And, and now I've got the heat is on in my head probably for the next hour. So thanks for that. And thank you to all our wonderful viewers out there. Remember to tap those like and subscribe buttons. Also, be sure to join our Facebook group, Around the Board. Send us an email, mail at aroundtheboard.net, or reach out to us on Twitter, TikTok, or other social medias. Until next time, we will see you around, around the board. There it is, baby. Best Mediterranean. Grady salvos in the Mediterranean. Hey, we need to get together and figure out some alternate rules combining that game and Mare Nostrum. That's the ultimate Mediterranean game of all time.